This is Simei Chow. She sleeps just four to five hours a night. I do set an alarm, but I've, I've never really heard it go off. I, I don't even know what it really sounds like. That's because she might have a very rare and recently discovered genetic mutation that makes her what researchers are now calling natural short sleepers. To learn more about these genes, what they mean for natural short sleepers, and the rest of us who need twice as much sleep per night, I sat down with the researcher who discovered these genes. I'm Ming Hui Fu, and I'm a professor of neurology at the University of California, San Francisco. What actually is the definition of a short sleeper? There are two types of short sleepers. One is, uh, we call them habitual short sleepers. They are the people who probably are not genetically wired, mm -hmm. but they somehow train themselves to do different things so they sleep fewer hours than, than most people. And I, um, it's hard to say what the long-term consequences will be, right? Mm. But the, the type that we study are, we call them natural short sleepers. Their body is wired to, to be a short sleeper. So our definition is usually somewhere uh, four to six hours. If they sleep more than what they need, mm. like six or six and a half, they actually feel awful. Huh. Yeah. So it's reversed from us, right? I would love to sleep 10 hours. <laughs> In 2009, you discovered the first gene that was associated with short sleeping. And just recently, you've discovered a second gene. Right. So recently, we published the second and third mutations that also cause people to be short sleepers. So these are all genes with different functions. So the biggest question I have now, and also for the sleep field, is that we really don't know very much or anything at all about how sleep is regulated, especially with sleep homeostasis. Right. And so we're kind of working, trying to piece together a, a puzzle that we have no idea what's in the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> and right now all we can say is we have these genes and they encode for completely different things and we don't know what they do. But hopefully when we find more, we'll be able to uh, somehow converge them and find a common pathway that regulate how uh, our sleep homeostasis uh, works. Mm. So, so once you've identified a person or a family who is, is experiencing short sleep, um, how do you actually go about finding the gene or the mutation responsible for that? So um, usually we have one person approach us first. Mm -hmm. And from this person, if we feel this person is uh, a really good, uh, true nature short sleeper, we then uh, try to see if we can uh, recruit this person's family. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, take a little bit of their blood to get their DNA and use their DNA to do um, sequencing and we look at the entire genome to look for um, the DNA changes uh, between them and compare to um, normal people or people in the same family that uh, are not short sleeper. So we use the CRISPR to generate a, a, a mice that the only change they have is the base that, that's the same with human. So these mice are normal, completely normal, except the single base that we change according to the human uh, short sleeper. And so if these mice who only have one base change mm -hmm. also sleep less than the normal mice, it will tell us, yes, this mm -hmm. single base change is very critical. How rare is it? How many people have you I would found? guess, I would guess one in several thousand. And we have so far uh, somewhere around 100 it's just over 100 people. Good morning. It is about 4.30, and I've been awake for the past 45 minutes, just doing a little bit of reading and catching up on work emails, starting with people on the East Coast, so it seems a little less crazy in terms of timing. We spoke to Sime, who is a short sleeper. Do you have any idea what her mutation is or what's going on with her? For Sime, we have uh, done questionnaire and the interview, strict interview, and we feel that she is a true nature short sleeper. But we have not found her mutation yet. Mm. Yeah. So for most of us um, who are not short sleepers, mm -hmm. If we tried to sleep just four or six hours a night, we would suffer consequences of sleep right. deprivation, and that's right. pretty serious stuff, right? Yes, it is. Um, are these people experiencing any kinds of abnormalities or other health effects from sleeping less? I cannot say 100% definitely. There is no negative uh, consequences. All I can say is from our res uh, observations so far, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like they have 
any health problem, and a lot of them live till 80s and 90s or mm. beyond, and, yeah, so, and then there are some very interesting uh, traits that ha they have. Um, again, it's not like 100% of them all have these traits, but a lot of them are very optimistic and very energetic. You know, mm. They sleep fewer hours than us, but they have two jobs or three jobs or go to school full time and have two jobs at the same time and very good multitaskers. And, and so, and then they also uh, have higher pain threshold. They don't feel pain as easy as we do. And they also don't experience jet lag. A lot of them don't experience jet lag. But another thing very common they say is they have very good memory. Uh -huh. They speak many languages <laughs> or they, you know, they have unusual audio memory. They hear something they never forget. Mm -hmm. Or it's just memory seems to be something that is very common. They have very good memory. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Do you think that there is something we can learn about sleep uh, for the rest of the population? For people who need eight hours of sleep, our body is not doing nothing. You know, our body is working very hard doing things for us so that we can stay healthy. Whatever it takes our body eight hours to accomplish, for these short sleepers, mm -hmm. only take four to six hours. In other words, their sleep is more efficient. Mm -hmm. It means that if we are well rested, we are likely to be like that. And there's a lot of scientific publication now saying that if we sleep deprive ourselves just a few hours a day on a long term basis, the chance for us to have many of the common diseases is much higher mm -hmm. than if we just sleep, you know, get good night's sleep. So short sleepers are more optimistic, they have better memory, they're healthier, they're living long lives. Um, this seems amazing. Do you see this as a sort of human evolution? So it, it appears like they, um, it's not a negative mutation, mm -hmm. or these are not negative mutations. And why do we only see uh, so few uh, people uh, among the population? And the one uh, reason I can think of is that these are probably uh, newer mutations. Mm. And so, because if you think of our human, recent uh, human history, right, there are two major events really significantly changed our sleep behavior. One is the invention of electricity and light, right? Mm -hmm. Before electricity and light, we all had to go to bed soon after dark. There was not much to do, right? Mm -hmm. There was no advantage to, to stay up late because you, <laughs> you'll be staying inside and, and had nothing to do, twist your thumbs, right? <laughs> and so there was no advantage to be short sleeper. And the second, uh, second major event, I think, is a digital revolution that really affects our sleep. So I think that these are all newer mutations that happened in the maybe last you know, 80, 100 years. And that's why so few people have um, these mutations. Yeah. We are barreling toward an age where people are talking about things like CRISPR and other techniques to change our genetics um, in, a, in a world where CRISPR is prevalent, do you imagine this is something that people could change about their own DNA? Yeah, to me, um, that day is still far away. Mm -hmm. uh, we first have to know CRISPR is safe <laughs> for human because by changing one gene, usually one gene and one protein, they have um, so many functions. Mm -hmm. The important thing is you don't want it to affect other uh, systems, right? And so on a shorter term, maybe more likely is we can find something that can help us uh, regulate the pathway and so that we can sleep more efficient. So I'm not a short sleeper. I definitely need eight hours of sleep a night. Um, do you think that's what you recommend to people, that you sleep a full eight hours? So what I think uh, most people, majority of the people, do need eight to eight and a half hours of sleep for most people. But sleep is really a very individual mm. thing. Everybody has their special sleep uh, pattern. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to have me.